بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ڈیئر اسٹوڈینٹس السلام علیکم ٹوڈے وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس دا سیکنڈ پارٹ آف آور پریویس لیکچر دیٹ واز اباؤٹ دا چیپٹر نمبر سکس اینڈ اٹ از اباؤٹ دا فائنینشیل اسٹیٹمنٹ انالیسز سو لیٹس ہیو اے لک وٹ ڈیڈ وی ڈسکس ان اور پریویس لیکچر فرسٹ وی ڈسکس دا بیسک فائنینشیل اسٹیٹمنٹس اینڈ دیئر کانٹینٹس دا بیسک فائنینشیل اسٹیٹمنٹس وچ وی آر یوز ٹو ود آر بیلنس شیٹ اینڈ انکم اسٹیٹمنٹ and what were their contents on the asset side and then on the liabilities and shareholders equity side and likewise we discussed the contents on the income statement on the, if there were some revenues and expenses and few terminologies regarding the interest before in uh, interest and tax interest after paying the in, uh, uh, interest before tax and then net income which was after paying for the interest and taxes and then we discussed the financial statement analysis and its importance to the firm and the outside suppliers of the capital the main target of our chapter was to discuss the different financial statement uh, ratios the, which are actually a kind of test to to judge the performance and the health of the firm and to home and what are the stakeholders for home this this type of information is important they were definitely the management of the firm the owners of the firm which we call them as stockholders and the capital providers suppliers and everybody who is dealing with the firm and then we discussed different tests we call them ratios there were some liquidity ratios they were based on the current assets divided by current liabilities that how much the firm is capable to pay its liabilities out of its current assets and then we discuss the quick ratio or we call it asset test ratio where we minus out the inventory out of our current assets and we divide it with our current liabilities to see how much the firm is capable to pay out its liabilities to meet its liabilities out of its most liquid assets that is cash and cash equivalent and then we discuss the leverage ratios that how the firms they rely on debt in their total capital structure and we discuss the debt to equity ratio it was total debt divided by shareholders equity to have an idea what is the size of debt and total equity in the overall capital structure and then we discussed the debt to total assets it is this ratio can be achieved by dividing the total debts with total assets then then we discussed the coverage ratio coverage ratio as it is clear how the firm is capable to meet its liabilities as far as the expenses like interest is concerned it was achieved by dividing the earning before interest and tax with the interest expenses and now we come to the second part of our chapter it's about the financial statement analysis and before we discussed different ratios within the balance sheet and then within the income statement and there were some com- now we will be discussing some combined test we will take the figures or the accounts from income statement and we judge it with the account from the balance sheet so we take the amounts across different financial statements so after studying this chapter as we mentioned in our previous lecture the objectives or the learning outcomes should be the same thing and let me repeat them uh, first of all you should be understand to the basic purpose of the financial statements and their contents and explain why financial statement analysis is important to the firm and to the outside suppliers of the capital and then define calculate and categorize according to liquidity financial leverage coverage activity and profitability the major financial ratios and understand what they can tell us about the firm humne jab hame puri understanding hogi ki firm ki different jo accounts hain jo different heads hain 
ان کا مطلب کیا ہے اونلی دین وی ول بی ایبل ٹو کنڈکٹ سم میننگ فل ٹیسٹ اور ہمیں اس ٹیسٹ کا سارا پتہ ہونا چاہیے کہ اس کا مطلب کیا ہے اس کا پرسپیکٹو کیا ہے اینڈ وائی وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ڈو دیٹ اور اس کے بعد ڈیفائن کیلکولیٹ اینڈ ڈسکس اے فارمس آپریٹنگ سائیکل اینڈ کیش سائیکلس اینڈ یوز ریشوز ٹو اینالائز اے فارمس ہیلتھ اینڈ دین ریکمینڈ ریزنیبل آلٹرنیٹو کورسز آف ایکشن ٹو امپروو دا ہیلتھ آف دا فارم سو ایز اٹ از ایویڈنٹ وین ایور یو جج ہیلتھ آف اینی باڈی ایون اے ہیومین وین دا ڈاکٹرز دے پرفارم ڈفرینٹ ٹیسٹ اینڈ میک فائنل ججمنٹ اباؤٹ دا ہیلتھ کنڈیشن آف دا پرسن سو اینی ڈیفیشنسیز اور پرابلمس دے آر ٹیکلڈ آفٹر ججنگ ایگزیکٹلی ویئر دا ویئر دا پرابلم از سو جسٹ لائک دیٹ فرم کی ہیلتھ ڈٹرمن کرنے کے بعد اس کے وہ ایریاز جہاں امپروومنٹ ریکوائرڈ ہے یا وہ ایریاز جہاں آپریشنز ریکوائرڈ ہیں اٹ مینس دا ایریاز ویئر یو مائٹ اسٹاپ سم آپریشنز اور ایریاز ویئر یو مائٹ انیشیٹ فردر آپریشنز یو کین آئیڈینٹیفائی بائی یوزنگ دیز کائنڈ آف ٹیسٹس اینڈ دین اینالائز اے فرمز ریٹرن آن انویسٹمنٹ دیٹ از ارننگ پاور اینڈ ریٹرن آن ایکوٹی یوزنگ ڈیو پوائنٹ اپروچ اینڈ دین انڈرسٹینڈ دا لمیٹیشنز آف فائنینشیل ریشو انالیسز when we say limitations it means we cannot make the best judgment just by picking few of the ratios we have to keep in mind some external factors as well the firms they might be showing some very good indicators but the external factors they are such that the, the financial manager have to make some different guesses and to work accordingly for example the firm is giving you the best figures the indicators they are good lekin jo economic condition hai country ki based on some future predictions like economic uh, political turmoil ya any kind of unrest in the country to future mein jo problems aa sakti hain so keeping in view that the financial manager has to make decisions so here we can say there are some limitations of financial ratio analysis because they cannot cover the external factors and use trend analysis common size analysis and index analysis to gain additional insights into a firm's performance so these things we will be discussing in our today's lecture and uh, before we discuss the liquidity ratios profit uh, and then leverage ratios and coverage ratio and today we are concerned with the activity ratios so activity ratios actually that is a blend of balance sheet items and income statement items so as you can see here so for from here we can go towards our first activity ratio that is called receivable turnover ratio so and first of all assume that all sales they are they are a credit sales and the same way all purchases the firms they make on credit or uh, we can achieve the uh, receivable turnover by dividing the annual net credit sales that is the total sales divided by receivables and uh, from the uh, balance sheet we saw before in our previous lecture do keep in mind that we have these two figures for, for from there that is the net credit sales of the year 2007 they were 2211 dollars whereas the receivables at the end of the year they are 394 dollars it means ke humne 2211 dollars ki sale mein se baki amount recover kar li hai and we are left with to recover from our creditors the uh, from our debtors 394 dollars so these are the receivables and you can see here for every sale of 5.61 we have a receivable of 1 unit it means the firm is rec uh, recovery of the firm is not bad it is kind of good and let's see the next average collection period that how many days it take to collect the receivables and you can see here it's again an activity ratio and ac average collection period we can determine it by dividing the 
result of our previous calculation with the days in the year. We have 365 days and we calculated our receivable turnover, it was 5.61. So you can see here we have an average collection period of 65 days for a given sale. So and you can see here if we further look at this that receivable turnover from our previous slide it was total sales divided by receivables. Sales over receivables. And when you divide it with the number of days in the year. So you can see here the receivables will come here to, divide, to multiply with 365 days and then you divide it with total sales so that you can get the average collection period. That for one sale you get out, uh, you, you can recover your uh, receivables within 65 days. And now let's see what is happening in the industry or the related kind of firms. So average collection period for the basket vendors, what we are we have used as an example here, the average collection period is reducing, it means it is improving. The firm now is getting capable to retrieve or to receive its receivables with lesser and lesser number of days. Whereas the industry average, it remains around 65-66. So it means the firm is achieving the industry average. So and the uh, firm has improved the average collection period to that of the industry average. It means we are now almost equal to the industry average and before that the firm performance was not good. And then likewise payable turnover again it's kind of blend of both the information from the income statement and the balance sheet. So we take figures from both sides and again it is known as activity ratio and we determine the payable turnover uh, using this formula that is annual credit purchases that is total purchases are based on credit and then divide it by the accounts payable. So we, the firm has made some payments and still some payments they are due. So those due payments they will be known as accounts payable. So the, we can achieve the payable turnover by using this formula. So suppose here that credit purchases are $1,551. So for basket vendors out of that balance sheet you have this figure of $94 that is accounts payable and we get a figure of 16.5 that is for a sale for a purchase of 16.5 dollars the remaining accounts payable is one. So let's see what is happening in the industry and before that let's look into the average payment days before we calculated the average collection period and here well, let's see the payment turnover in days. So it, it actually represents the average number of days that payables are outstanding. So in this case, like the in the previous case, days in the year that is 365 and then divide by the with the uh, with the payable turnover turnover we calculated in our previous slide it was 16.5 so we get an answer equal to 22.1 days so for <coughs> the every number of days that payables are outstanding it is 22.1 days so w what the industry has in this regard if you look uh, in this schedule here payable turnover in number of days for the firm we are talking about and then we compare it with the industry. So you see here in 2005 the figures they were almost close to the industry but not exactly. It, it, was, it was lesser than the industry but it was closer to the industry. And then uh, when we go to 2006 the industry average is 51 whereas the firm our target firm is 25.4. So it means the number of days to make the payments to the accounts payable 
it is lesser than the industry so either we can say it is improved or is it good so let's think about it most of the time in any kind of business the businessmen they prefer to do business with other people's capital so in this case if the company makes brisk payments to other to all its uh, suppliers it means company is utilizing its own capital rather than utilizing others capital so whereas the in the industry the other competitors are the same firms uh, firms in the same industry they prefer to use the capital of other people so it is it is advisable under the current business conditions to use other people's capital any smart entrepreneur would be using others capital to generate profits for himself or for herself and for the society and for the economy but here we see the number of days to make payments or the payable turnover in number of days is quite less for the firm basket vendors than the industry and now talk let's talk about the inventory turnover it's again a blend of income statement and balance sheet ratios and we call it activity ratio and we determine the inventory turnover that is the we calculate it by cost of goods sold divided by the inventory if and if you took look back to the balance sheet we saw in our previous lecture you, you will see a figure of cost of goods sold of 1599 and uh, then divide it with the inventory so you get a figure of 2.3 that is it indicates the effectiveness the eff effectiveness of the inventory management practices of the firm that how effectively the inventory is used in the total uh, business operations and how it in, uh, contributes towards the cost of goods sold and let's look at the uh, industry average and the bw that is basket vendors average if you look at from the year 2005 the inventory turnover ratio was 2.64 and gradually it was decreasing as we move towards year 2007 so the figures were higher in 2005 and 2006 whereas if we look at the industry so what is happening there it is almost stable that is around 3.4 and 5 and then we see here the denominator jo cheez divide kar rahi hai is inventory turnover mein that is inventory aur inventory ki amount ya quantity ya volume jitna zyada hoga it means we will be getting a lesser amount of answer so is case mein jo inventory divide kar rahi hai that is more than in this situation aur isi tarah se is situation mein jo inventory niche denominator mein divide kar rahi hai uska size is even lesser aur jaise jaise we are getting uh, answer shorter or smaller the inventory size is increasing aur अगर आप इंडस्ट्री एवरेज देखें तो इसमें क्या है कि इन इन कंपैरिजन टू बास्केट वंडर द इन्वेंट्री डिवाइडिंग द कास्ट ऑफ गुड्स सोल्ड इज फार लेस देन इन द केस ऑफ बास्केट वंडर सो यू सी हियर द साइज ऑफ इन्वेंट्री व्हिच इज डिवाइडिंग इन इन द डिनोमिनेटर इन कंपैरिजन इज lesser than the basket vendor so that the answers they are greater than the answers we are having from the basket vendor so it means the inventory turnover ratio is not compatible with the industry and the inventory inventory management is uh, there is a question mark that is it being used efficiently or the industry or the firm is achieving its or its objectives towards the inventory management so if we look at the industry the answer is no so there is some suspicions that how the inventory is being handled in the firm so let's see in the next slide that if you look at this graph the trend analysis of inventory turnover it is continuously downward it means the inventory is being treated not up to the standard whereas there is a big gap between the industry average and the handling of the basket vendor 
so this this is kind of alarm to look into the operations that how inventory is being treated ke usme kahan kahan khamiyan hain kya hum inventory ko zyada price pe khareed rahe hain ya inventory ko efficiently final products mein convert nahi kar pa rahe so ye woh sari cheeze hain jo financial manager can get an indication using this type of ratios and then the next activity ratio it is about total asset turnover ratio so total asset turnover we can get it using this formula of net sales divided by total assets so it means ke assets ka har unit contribute kitna kar raha hai towards the net sales you can see here total net sales divided by total assets and we have a figure of 1.02 it means every unit of assets that is a single unit of asset is contributing 1.02 towards the net sales so the it will uh, it it shows the effectiveness of the firms utilizing its assets ke assets ko kitna effectively utilize kiya ja raha hai ke wo uska har unit kitne units of sale mein convert ho raha hai agar aapko yahan answer zyada milta hai for example if you receive two here it means ke aap apne assets ko behtar utilize kar rahe hain every unit of asset is contributing double or twice towards the sales and let's have a look at the industry average and before that if you look at the pattern of basket wonder over 3 years it is almost same around 1.01 to 1.03 where is the industry average there is a big difference here about 0.12 here and then about 0.11 here and then about 0.15 so you see here the gap has increased in the year 2007 so it means industry ke andar jo rest of the firms jo hain wo apne assets ko zyada effectively utilize kar rahe hain unki asset ki efficiency basket wonder se zyada hai so it means ke company ko apne operations ke andar pin point karna padega ke kaun se areas jo hain kahan kahan pe assets jo hain they are not being properly utilized aur kaun se areas behtar perform kar rahe hain aur is base ke upar the management may take some decisions to abandon certain operations and maybe there are some strength areas where the company has stronger positions to wahan pe further investment karke apne asset utilization utilization ko aur bhi behtar kiya ja sakta hai and then we have a question here why is this ratio considered weak so it means it weak means ke in this case as you see here the figures they are lesser in case of basket wonder so these are the weaker figures it, it it actually means the assets they are not being properly utilized so that these figures they are weak iske baad hum profitability ratios pe aate hain and again it's kind of blend of income statement and balance sheet figures so here you can see first of all gross profit margin gross profit margin as you know out of total sales when you deduct cost of goods sold you get gross profit margin and then this gross profit is available for rest of the expenses रेस्ट ऑफ द एक्सपेंसिस में आपके एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव एक्सपेंसिस आ सकते हैं आपके सेलिंग एक्सपेंसिस आ सकते हैं एंड देन यू गेट योर अर्निंग्स बिफोर इंटरेस्ट एंड टैक्स सो आउट ऑफ अर्निंग बिफोर इंटरेस्ट एंड टैक्स द फर्म पेज इंटरेस्ट एक्सपेंसिस एंड देन द फर्म पेज टैक्सेस सो हियर यू कैन कैलकुलेट कि आपकी नेट सेल्स में से कितना ग्रास प्रॉफिट की तरफ कंट्रीब्यूट हो रहा है so out of a gross profit of 612 whereas total sales they are 2211 you are having 0.277 or 27.7% of gross profit it means for every 100 units of sales there is 27.7 points of gross profit or if you look at this figure for every unit of sale 
you have 0.277 to meet your rest of the expenses. And if you look at the industry pattern, so you see here, ke first of all, this is alarming here, ke every year basket wonder ka gross profit reduce kar raha hai. So before even you look at the industry average, aapko the financial manager must be concerned ke what is going on here. So, and when you relate it with the other uh, figures from the industry, there might be some situations that gross profit reduce kar jai, maybe because of the increasing trend in the cost of goods sold. Unki jo cost hai, input cost hai, it, maybe it is increased, so that's why the gross profits, they have been reduced. But the in industry, if we compare it with the industry, so we will have the best judgment. So if you look at the industry, in case of basket wonder, the gross profits, they are decreasing every year. But in case of industry, gross profits, they are increasing every year. So again, this is a worrying sign for the basket wonder, that there is something wrong as we talk of cost of goods sold. And do remember, we have previous calculations in inventory management. Ko pinpoint kiya tha. So there might be something wrong in the inventory management. So here, the basket wonder has a weak gross profit margin. And when the companies they have weaker gross profit margin, it means they are contributing the, the less profits they are available for the rest of expenses. And if you look at the trend, if you look back in the history, here we have only for three years. So if you, you can take for more years to have better idea, but for these three years, basket wonder is downward declining, whereas the industry is upward declining. So this gap is increasing. So this, first of all, the first sign was that basket wonder ka gross profit margin itself will reduce kar raha hai. it is downward decreasing. And then the second sign is that industry ke andar gross profit margin increase kar raha hai. So these are the two worrying signs the company should be uh, tackling with that. And then net, net profit margin. Before we talked about gross profit margin, which we calculated using our total sales and we deducted out of it cost of goods sold to get our gross profit. And out of that gross profit, if we deduct rest of the expenses, we get the net profit. So net profit, it means the profit which is available for distribution among the common stockholders. And the company, the firm has paid all the interest liabilities and all the taxes on it. So the net profit margin, we can get it using this formula here that dividing the net profit after taxes with net sales. So for basket vendor, we had a net profit of $91 and we divide it with our total sales to get an amount of 0 0.041. It means every unit of sale is contributing 0 0.041 units of profit. And if we talk in percentage, so the net pr uh, profit margin is 4.1%. Means for a sale of 100 dollars, there is a profit of 4.1 dollars. Now let's look at the industry pattern. And even before the industry pattern, there is a worrying sign for the basket wonder here. Ke every year, the profit, the net profit margin is reducing here. And for from 2005 to 2006, there is a big jump. Almost the figure reduced to half from 9% to 4.9%. And then there is a drop of 0.8%. So this jump from a better figures towards the worst kind of figures, it is a huge sign to look into the operations. And if you, and then the next step is, let's look into the industry pattern. So if you look at 2005, the firm was performing better than the industry. And then if you look into 2006, it reduced to almost half than the industry average. 
and then in 2007 it became almost or exactly half of the industry average. So, in this case, there are multiple factors that we have to see. For example, in 2005, the company has reported its expenses either more or less reported. So, its impact is on net profits. It means that the accumulated or deferred amounts of taxes वो कंपनी को ग्रेजुअली जब पे करना पड़े तो उसके अमाउंट जो थी वो टैक्सेस उसके जो नेट प्रॉफिट्स थे वो रिड्यूस कर गए सो इन दिस केस हियर यू सी द इंडस्ट्री पैटर्न इज हैविंग एन इंक्रीजिंग पैटर्न वेयर एज इन केस ऑफ बास्केट वंडर इट इज रिड्यूसिंग एवरी ईयर वी मूव टुवर्ड्स नेक्स्ट ईयर्स बट एक्चुअली वी आर रिड्यूसिंग आवर नेट प्रॉफिट मार्जिन सो बी डब्ल्यू हैज पुअर नेट प्रॉफिट मार्जिनस and the, this the sign the worrying sign for any for every manager it is clear from this chart when every finance manager would look at it it is very much worrying so the, there are a lot of operations ke jinke andar expenses ya to zyada report ho rahe hain ya company is not performing efficiently and is not utilizing all its resources efficiently that's why with lesser performance the inputs, the input expenses, they are more than the output of their performance. So if you see here, the graph is very much disappointing, whereas industry is performing very well. And the distance, the gap between the industry and the firm in their net profit margins is increasing. And next is return on investment. Return on investment, we can calculate it by dividing net profit after taxes with total assets. So for basket vendor, for the year 2007, at the end of year 2007, net profits are here and total assets are $2,160 and we have a figure of 0 0.042. So you can see here for every dollar of assets or for every unit of asset the net profit being contributed towards the firm is 0 0.042 or you can write it as 4.2 percent it means for a hundred dollars of uh, assets for every hundred dollar of assets which are being utilized to convert it into net profit and the it will get a figure of 4.2 percent and now let's look at the pattern in the historic pattern and then we compare it with the industry average. So in this case here, again, it's a worrying sign. So unfortunately, we selected a firm which is not performing well. Hum kisi aisi firm ka bhi data le sakte se jo acha perform kar rahi hai. Lekin humne wo sare areas jin ko hum soch sakte hain ya jin ke baare mein hum nahi soch sakte the अगर हम इसको प्रॉफिटेबल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन को लेते तो शायद हम वो सारे एरियाज को ना सोचते लेकिन जब हम व्हेन वी टॉक ऑफ बैड परफॉर्मेंस तो हमें उन सारे एरियाज को सोचना पड़ेगा उन सारे एरियाज को कवर करना पड़ेगा कि कहां-कहां पे परफॉर्मेंस जो है वो खराब जा रही है सो इन दिस केस हियर अगेन इफ यू लुक एट रिटर्न ऑन इन्वेस्टमेंट दैट एवरी यूनिट ऑफ एसेट हाउ मच इज कंट्रीब्यूटिंग टुवर्ड्स द नेट प्रॉफिट सो यू सी हियर Okay, 2007 was 4.2% which is lesser than 2006 so, and then again in 2005 it was quite not exactly compatible with the industry but it was not as bad and then if we move forward so you see here industry after 2005 is improving whereas basket vendors is performing bad so Again, the firm has to look into its operations that assets they are being mishandled. Assets ko unki full utilization pe ya unki full capacity pe utilize nahi kiya ja raha. Ya to assets jo hain wo obsolete ho chuke, unki they are not performing well, unko ye replace karna chahiye ya kuch operations business ke aise hain jinko altogether stop kar dena chahiye taake humare jo net profits hain उनके अंदर all the assets should contribute positively. 
So everything which is contributing negatively should, should be rectified. And again, if you look at the chart, it's a very much disturbing sign for any financial manager that not only the graph for the firm is reducing or is going downward, but the industry is going upward. And the gap with every passing day is increasing. So these are the worrying signs for a firm to think of their future initiatives. And then the return on equity. It means we relate our net profit after taxes towards the shareholders' equity. We have shareholders' ka jo capital, we have shareholders' se financing, we have the owners of the firm, we have assets, we have equity, ko, how efficiently firm jo hai, wo net profits may convert. Kar rahi hai. So we can achieve that by this formula that net profit after taxes, dividing it with shareholders' equity. And for basket vendor, we have these figures that the net profit after taxes and then the shareholders equity both are reported here. So for every dollar or for every unit of shareholders equity, the contribution towards the net profit is 0 0.08. Or you can say it 8%. It means for every $100 of equity, the firm is earning $8. And now let's have a look at the industry pattern. Again, here you can see the firm's performance over the years is deteriorating, that every next year the firm is performing bad. Whereas, if we look at the industry, after 2005, one year of bad performance, the next year firm performance, the industry performance improved by 0.7%, whereas in case of basket vendor, the performance deteriorated by 1.4%. So again, here you can see the owners of the, cap, uh, of the organization, that is the shareholders, they must not be happy with the performance of the firm. So in this case, mein, जो हमने एजेंसी प्रॉब्लम जिसको हमने डिस्कस किया था हम अपने अर्ली लेक्चर्स के दौरान जिसमें ऑनर्स और मैनेजमेंट के दरमियान जो डिफरेंसेस आते हैं दैट इज वी वी स्टडीड एन एजेंसी थ्योरी तो उसके मुताबिक जो इन दोनों पार्टीज के दरमियान इन दोनों स्टेक होल्डर्स के दरमियान जो डिफरेंसेस हैं दैट इज नॉट ओनली बिकॉज़ ऑफ दिस टाइप ऑफ ऑपरेशंस बट आल्सो सम अदर काइंड ऑफ ऑपरेशंस साइकोलॉजिकल फीलिंग्स के ऑनर और जो मैनेजमेंट है they are not always comfortable with each other. That is the agency theory. Or in this case, mein particularly, when firm ki performance every year is going towards, uh, is deteriorating, and in this case, particularly, the owners will not be happy with the management. So, this consequences be ye bhi ho sakta hai ki management ko replace kar diya jaye. So, it's a worrying sign for the, for the manage managers, particularly the financial managers, ki unko firm ki performance ko at least they should make it compatible with the industry and to be ambitious, unko industry ko lead karna chahiye. And again, the same story, the, this is downward sloping for the basket vendors and return on equity for the industry after reaching 2006 a downward slope, it is improving. So the distance between the, the gap between the performance of the industry and our target firm, it is increasing. And then is there is another approach which we called DuPont approach. It is not much different, but in, it involves many variables, but finally we are left with the same variables we discussed before. So you, if you look at here, the return on investment which we got by dividing the net profits with the total assets. So here, if you look at, look at this formula, the net profit margin into total assets turnover. According to the DuPont approach, we calculate return on investment by multiplying these two things, that is net profit margin and total asset turnover. So how do we calculate net profit margin? So it is net profit after taxes divided by net sales, and we multiply it with total asset turnover. With total asset turnover, we calculated it by dividing the net sales with total assets here. So you can see here. And if you look at here, 
the net sales in this case it is dividing and here it is in the numerator so we can cancel them out to get the final figure of net profit after taxes divided by total assets so it's the same thing but we involve all the relevant variables here to get the exact picture and then we talk of return on equity so in this case again we have a formula net profit after tax divided by shareholders equity but in case of dew point approach we make it <coughs> net profit margin into total assets turnover into equity multiplier so if you look at this formula here that net profit margin that is net profit after tax divided by net sales in the first bracket and then in the second uh, case total assets turnover net sales divided by total assets the second bracket and then equity multiplier which we get by total assets and we divide it with shareholders equity to get equity multiplier and if you look at here the net sales are in the denominator here and net sales are in the numerator here so there this they will be cancelled with each other and if you look at total assets it is in the denominator and here the total asset are in the numerator so they will also be cancelled out here and we will be left with net profit after tax divided by shareholders equity but if you look at in all these variables you see all the relevant variables they are involved here so this approach is known as dew point approach so according to this approach when we make calculations so you see here the earning power or return on investment that is the earning power of the assets it would be sales profitability into asset efficiency and a uh, return on asset as we know net profit margin into total assets turnover as we discussed in our previous slide so we get these figures from our calculations and we get a uh, return on investment of 4.2% and then if we look at the industry we find out 9.8% using the dew point model and then return on equity and the dew point approach here you can see we multiply three different ratios net profit margin total assets turnover and equity multiplier so we take all these calculations we did in our previous slides unko jab hum multiply karte hain to we get a figure of 8% and 17.9% so if you look back the calculations they may not be different from each other but to have an exact calculation it or to have a comprehensive calculations you might need dew point approach as well and then summary of the profitability trend analysis jo kuch humne piche discuss kiya unki summary kuch is tarah se hogi the profitability ratio for basket wonders have all been falling since 2005 jaisa humne apni sari slides mein dekha ke it is falling all over the period starting from 2005 6 and 7 each has been below the industry average for the past 3 years and then this indicates that cost of goods sold and administrative costs may both be too high and potential problem for the basket vendor iske andar cost of goods sold jisme inventory bhi aati hai uski handling mein problem hai uske ilawa administrative expenses jo hain uske andar bhi problem ho sakti hai it means the all the variables are all the participants they are not being utilized efficiently and then note this result is consistent with the low interest coverage ratio aur isi tarah se interest coverage ratio bhi lower hai jisko humne pichli uh, lecture mein discuss kiya hua hai and then summary of ratio analysis the inventories are too high isse hum kya pick kya kiya ek as a finance manage, manager the inventories are too high inventories they are not being utilized very much properly and then may be paying off creditors too soon jaisa humne dekha ki creditors ko 
VW is paying at much faster pace than the industry. So, हम अपने जो creditors हैं उनको बड़ी जल्दी payments करते हैं. And then cost of goods sold may be too high. इसके अलावा हमारी जो cost of goods sold है that may be very much higher. उसके अंदर हमें देखना पड़ेगा कि कौन कौन से expenses ऐसे हैं, कौन से direct expenses ऐसे हैं जिनको हम avoid कर सकते हैं या जिनको हम ज़्यादा efficiently use कर सकते हैं. Selling general and administrative costs may be too high. And then when we come from the gross profit towards our net profits before paying interest and tax, so we have to compensate for the selling general and administrative expenses. So in that case also, ye bhi industry ke saath agar hum compare kare, to they may, may be too high for the BW, the company we are talking about. And now let's come to the next topic which we call as common size analysis. In this in fact, we do we do? In the balance sheet and in the income statement, we divide all figures from one figure. In the balance sheet, we divide all assets from the asset side. And then, on the liability side, again, because assets and liabilities and shareholders' equity, they are the same thing. That's why we call them a balance sheet. So again, on the liability side, we divide all the figures with liabilities and shareholders' equity. To have a common size analysis, usko hum for different number of years ke saath aise hi karte hain aur hum dekhte hain ki ratios jo hain wo kis tarah se improve ho rahi hain ya deteriorate ho rahi hain. So it is an analysis of percentage financial statements where all balance sheet items are divided by total assets and all income statement items are divided by net sales or revenues. And in this way, on income statement ki side, we divide all figures with total sales or revenues divide kar dete hai, to get a, a percentage figures. So in, our, in this case of our basket vendor firm, so you can see here the, the financial statements figure they are given on the asset side for 2005 and then for 2006 and 2007. And these are the total assets for these given years. So in case of 2005, we figures ko starting from cash, account receivable, inventory, other current assets, in sub ko hum $1,223 ke saath divide kar dete hain. Okay? And we have these figures in percentage. So you can see here the same way we do for 2006 and for 2007. And if you look at the pattern now, you will have more meaningful insight into the operations or the health of the firm. Like most of the ratios, if you look at them, they are decreasing when we move towards the present year. Okay. So sometimes the weaker and stronger ratios, they are represented with different figures. But in this case, as you can see here, the firm is not performing better in, uh, even if we look at the history of the firm as well. And then if we come to the next phase, which is the, by dividing the liability side with the total liabilities and equity. So you can see here, these are, this is the amount same as that of total assets. So you divide all the figures with this figure, with this amount, to get this percentage. And then you, we have for 2006 and we have 2007. So, and if you look at this, for every figure the denominator is 1. Okay, so it means we are having a common size of analysis that is we we have all these figures in percentage so in this case denominator is 100 in fact so we are talking of percent so these are the percentage figures so that's why the denominator should be 100 so for every 100 units or for every 100 dollars of total liabilities and equity the firm is having these uh, th these figures so if you look at these figures the you can look into the performance and you can judge the performance of the firm 
Now let's look at the common size analysis for the income statement of balance of the basket vendor. So here we have a data of 2005, 6 and 7 and we have net sales figure which are highlighted in yellow and we divide all the given figures of cost of goods sold, gross profit, administrative expenses, earning before interest and, exp uh, and interest and tax and so on with the given net sales figure to get a percentage figure for 2005. So you see here for 2005, for 2006 and for 2007 and we call it common size as I mentioned before for all these percentage figures which we calculated by dividing them with the total sales it is for $100 of sales the given amounts are given here. So here you can see the cost of goods sold from starting from 2005 to 2007 it is increasing. So just I mean previous calculations may be So it is kind of worrying sign that historic, historically firm ki cost jo hai, it is increasing. And again if we look at the gross profit uh, margins so it is decreasing with every year because the cost of goods sold is increasing so accordingly gross profits they are shrinking and then when we talk of administrative expenses they are also on a rise. If you look at 2005 towards 2006 there is an increase in the percentage and again if you look at the earning before interest and tax it is reducing with every passing year and then the interest expense is increasing. So you see here the company has to pay more and more taxes to, because the firm may be relying more on debts. So it means the firm might reduce the uh, re re its reliance on the debts as well so that the interest expenses can be saved. And then we have earning before tax. So it is reducing with every uh, with the year like in 2005 it was a good amount of 15.1 percent and then it was 8 percent and then it is 6.8 percent and then earning after tax it is also decreasing and cash dividends they are also decreasing. So cash dividends they may be decreasing more because it depends on the retained earning company apne future investment ke liye kitne income ko retain kar leti hai that it will determine ke dividends kitne pay kiye ja rahe hai. So after the common size analysis let's move towards the index analysis. So index analysis mein hum kya karte hai ke jo humare paas historic data pada hoa hai for example in the case of our today's case like basket vendor we have figures for 2005, 2006 and 2007. So what do we do? ek year ki figures ko hum we take them as a base year and then we take the respective years as a in, in relationship to that base year figures so we make uh, an indexation with that base year so iske andar kya hoga ke 2005 ki jo figures hain so all those figures given in 2005 will be divided by itself and then the next year the the balances given in the next year's figures they will be divided with the respective balances given in the previous year. For example, agar cash amount 2005 mein jo given hai, first year mein as a, let's take 2005 as a base year, to us mein kya hoga? Cash ki jo given amount hai, usko hum usi amount ke saath divide karenge so that we get an answer equal to 100%. And then next year, we take the cash figure of 2005 and we divide the 2006 cash balance with 2005's cash balance and we can have an idea that how much how many percentage has been increased as far as the base year is concerned and likewise for every head in the balance sheet and the financial statement the respective accounts or the respective heads will be dividing all the figures in the coming years so if you look at the balance sheets of 2005, 6 and 7 in case of basket vendor. So you see here the indexed amounts, the indexed figures in the second half, in the second part of our chart, uh, uh, table here that in case of first year cash it is 100, uh, 148,000 dollars. 
so and we divide it with the same amount which is the base year which is 2005 so we get an amount 100 percent and then for the next year the next year of cash we have 100 and we divide 100 with the base year's cash balance so we get an amount 67.6 percent so it means the cash balance jo hai, it has been reduced from 2005 to 2006 or 2006 ka jo cash balance hai, it is 67.6 percent of the base year's cash balance and likewise 2007 ka jo cash balance hai, it is 60.8 percent of the cash balance of 2005 which is a base year or isi tarah se if we look at the accounts receivable so we make these calculations ke 2005 ka jo accounts receivable hain if we take them as a hundred so 2006 ke jo accounts receivable hain they have increased to 144.9 and 2007 ke accounts receivable uh, jo hai, they have been increased from 100 to 139.2 so likewise for all these figures we can have the indexed uh, figures here in the second part of our uh, table so you can see you can make a uh, much deeper look into the performance of the firm ke figures jo hain wo kis tarah se improve ho rahi hain ya wo deteriorate ho rahi hain so if you look at the cash balance cash balances they are decreasing so is ko hum relate kar sakte hain ke hamara average number of uh, cash payments jo hain for our accounts payable they are much lesser than the industry average so our cash balance is shrinking maybe because of that higher frequency of our cash payments and then our accounts receivable they are increasing and then in 2007 they decreased a little bit so likewise every head it has its explanation so again if you look at the more worrying sign here the inventory the inventory it is increasing if we start from the base year you see the if the base year inventory is 100 then the next year inventory has increased to 191.3 and then in, in in contrast of the base year in 2007 the inventory has been doubled so it means inventory is not being handled efficiently and then all these figures you can uh, take them as for their explanations and accordingly the management should perform to rectify the operations such that the wealth maximization of the star shareholders could be made possible and uh, also the if you talk of a better health uh, firm where the firm is performing uh, best or, or at least compatible with the industry so in that case company ko apne jo outside suppliers hain ya jo outside stakeholders hain unke saath negotiate karne mein ek edge mil sakta hai isi tarah se jaise isko hum aise bhi dekh sakte hain ki hamare jo cash payments hain they are quite frequent aur iske saath saath hamara jo firm ki overall performance hai it is not good so we can relate it with our payments ke hamare jo every number of days hai to make our to settle our accounts payable they are far less than the industry average so iska matlab hai ke jo hamare suppliers hain they trust us lesser than the other firms in the industry and su such that they ask us or they demand us to make payments frequently and for in the shorter intervals aur agar confidence suppliers ka ya jo external stakeholders hain unka confidence firm ke sath zyada ho to it means ke firm jo hai that is in a, in a better position to negotiate with the outside parties and likewise on the liability side if you take the indexed balance sheet so you see here the performance indicators for different years in comparison with the base year and if you find anything extraordinary like in this case the accrued other accru accruals the it has been increasing at a very very high pace so why they are in incre increasing the, the the liabilities the other liabilities 
So there m might be some something we are differing over time. So the firm has to take into account all these matters such that the figures should remain in somewhat normal phase. So these are the abnormal things which definitely require certain rectifications. And again here if you look at the long term debts, they have increased over the uh, over the three years. For example in the base year if it were 100 and in 2006 they have been 300 times. So again the long term debts they are increasing and if you look at the long term debts they are increasing like so accordingly the interest payments they should also be increasing. So uh, because the, for the basket vendor the earning after uh, payment of taxes and interest it was reducing every year so this is one of the reasons the company has started relying more on long term debts and then if you look at the equity it has also grown and uh, now let's look at the indexed income statement of the basket funders here we s you can see for the three years we take 2005 as a base year and we divide the respective heads with the base year and we get these figures. So if you look at the net sales they have increased over the time <coughs> and accordingly the cost of goods sold it has also increased at an alarming pace. So that's why the gross profits they have uh, they have not grown that much if we have reduced if we could have reduced the cost of goods sold the gross profits could be more than the, the, the reported ones or iske sath jo ek aur eye catching figures hain you can see here for administrative expenses which have doubled for the firm from 2005 with when it was 100 now it has become 212.8 and then in 2007 it has become 223.3 as it has been grown from the base year of 2005. So accordingly the earning before interest and tax they have also reduced. There is not a good growth in the earning before interest and tax whereas you can see there was, there was a growth in the net sales but there is not respective growth in the earning before interest and tax that means ke hamare jo uh, expenses hain we have not have controlled them very well and we have not utilized or efficiently uh, utilized uh, expenses so and then we have interest expense which have increased again because our long term debts they were they increased that we saw in, in our previous slide so because of increased uh, long term debts interest expenses they have also increased and our earning before tax it is shrinking every year as you can see if we take 2005 as a base year so the with respect to 2005 earnings they are reducing and again earning after tax they are reducing and cash dividends as we mentioned before with the company they can pay on the any any amount any given amount and the rest can be retained as retained earning for their future investments so when we talk of indexed income statement and indexed balance sheet we can have a better look into the growth or deterioration into different heads of the financial statements and what we discussed today the summary is about the activity ratios we discussed it was a blend of uh, balance sheet and financial statement and we had different figures from there and you can see here we calculated the receivable turnover and we had receivable turnover in number of days and then inventory turnover and inventory turnover in number of days and total asset turnovers and the profitability ratios we discussed there were different formulas for that and also there was an approach of dew point approach to determine it's it, the f original formula would remain the same but we involve all the respective uh, the relevant players into it to get the more clearer picture of it and that's all for today thank you very much and assalamu alaikum